Hi, I'm Matt Mayfield, and you're watching the Audio Fundamentals course. So unfortunately, this is going to be a short video, and I don't have my usual studio setup to record this in. You may hear the difference. Uh, see if you can guess what microphone I'm using to record this voiceover. It has been a long time. I started a new job working for a software company, and so time has been very, very rare that I've had to make a video, but I thought I would make a very quick one just so that you can see something. And today we're going to talk about MIDI. Now, the thing about MIDI is that it is not always what people think it is. And in fact, it does not record sound at all. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And the way it works is it records note commands as numbers, commands that describe sound. But again, it's not recording the sound at all. There are two types of MIDI components. Uh, sometimes they're hardware, sometimes they're software. The first kind is always hardware, and that's a MIDI controller which we'll look at in depth in a minute. And then there is the MIDI sound module, a sound generator. Nowadays, a lot of the time, you'll find those in software. One common name for them is a VSTi, but that is really just one very specific type of a software sound generator. The generic name is a software synthesizer. So for this video, let's just take a closer look at the types of MIDI components. So here's some MIDI controllers. All of these are things that a human being plays to send MIDI data, the MIDI commands that say, like, turn this note on this loud. Okay, now turn the note off. You've got keyboards. Those are by far the most common. You've got drum sets. These can be fun. And especially if you hook them into a very nice software synthesizer, you can get a pretty decent drum sound. You've got a guitar to MIDI converter, or a pitch to glitch, as they sometimes call it. I used to have one of those, and the way they work is it has a split pickup where there's a monophonic pitch sensor that looks at each string, and then it tries to detect what pitch that string is playing. They're, those tend not to work very reliably unless you have incredibly impeccable technique, which I don't. Next, we've got wind controllers. These can be fun. They often finger like a saxophone or a flute, and they usually have some kind of sensor for wind. So you can get a very nice natural sound out of MIDI instruments by having that breath sensor control, it sends messages, how hard you're blowing, and then the synthesizer will respond in a way to make it expressive. And then, of course, you've got various other things that have drum pads, touch surfaces. There are lots of different types of MIDI controllers, but all they do is send those commands that describe how a synthesizer should behave and produce sound. Now, the individual sound module is connected to the controller usually, at least in older hardware setups, from the MIDI out of the controller to the MIDI in of the sound module. Nowadays, oftentimes these MIDI connections are hidden, embedded in a USB connection, but the underlying numbers that are being passed are still those MIDI commands. You'll notice that I've labeled the headphone jack in blue there. That's because that's actually audio. That's an analog audio signal that is coming out of the headphone jack of this particular sound module. Now, a lot of the time, you'll have both of these components in one box, often as a synthesizer keyboard. But really, this is two components inside one casing, and there is something called a local switch, which is usually set in software through the front panel, that decides whether the MIDI commands generated by the controller section get sent to the built-in synth section or not. So thank you for watching. Sorry that's all the time I have for right now, but I will try to make shorter videos more often so that it keeps going. And please let me know in the comments if there are subjects that you'd like to cover or questions that you have. Thanks, I'll see you next time.